It's good news. Let's read Daniel chapter 7. Daniel talks about something that we kind of don't always focus on. But Daniel is, was one of the permanent secretaries in the government of Babylon. He was a Jew. He was not a Babylonian. But he was so excellent in his work that he was promoted to permanent secretary. And in verse 13 of chapter 7, Daniel says, In my vision at night, I looked and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient of days, referring to God the Father, and was led into his presence. He was given authority, speaking of Christ now, he was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. Three words I want you to underline. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. That is the exact definition of kingdom. Kingdom are these three words in the Hebrew language. Kingdom simply means authority, glory, and sovereign power. Then the next statement says, All the peoples of the nations and men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. That will not pass away. Everybody say amen. That means no terrorist can attack this kingdom. The next statement says, And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. And the people say, Amen. 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 The kingdoms of the world are being shaken right now, economically and otherwise. Turn to Isaiah chapter 9, please. Let's see what this kingdom is about. Now here we find in Daniel, Daniel is looking ahead and he is seeing... The future coming of Christ. And Daniel says, I see an, uh, uh, one who was the son of God coming in the clouds of power, clouds of glory, in the clouds of heaven. And he's being presented to the ancient of days. He's going before his father, God. And then the, then the father gives him what? Gives him a kingdom with glory and authority and sovereignty. So this kingdom... Is given to him by the Father. Who is it for? Isaiah 9 verse 6. Again, I repeat this verse. For unto us a child is born. as the arrival of the, of, the, of the Messiah. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called what? Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace. There will be no end. And... The Holy Spirit focused something on me this week as I studied for you. And that is the word peace. We've been talking about the government. We're going to talk about peace a little later on in this series. But I want to just point it out to you now. Since we got so many people worried. This kingdom brings with it peace. That means you're supposed to be completely at rest. No panic, no anxiety, no fear. If you are in the kingdom of God, you should not be afraid of anthrax. Why? It says when the kingdom comes, it brings his government. But it also says the government has with it peace. Peace means quiet confidence. You are confident that nothing can harm you. This kingdom has with it peace. The next statement. And he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with righteousness and justice. From that time on and forever. And the Lord's zeal will accomplish this. Please turn with me to the book of Matthew, please. Matthew chapter 4. So we find Daniel prophesying about this kingdom coming. We find Isaiah confirming that it is coming through this great child that will be born. And he's coming upon with a shoulder full of government. So the kingdom of God is not a religion. This is important. It is a government. It is a rulership. We find Jesus now arriving. The boy is born. This child is born. The son is given. And here he is showing up at age 30 in Matthew 4 verse 17. And he's about to begin... The establishment of the introduction of this kingdom. Let's read what it says in Matthew chapter 4 verse 7. He says, And from that time forward, Jesus began to preach. Underline this verse please. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has arrived. That was his introduction. So we find Daniel saying the kingdom is coming. Isaiah is confirming. That's what he's bringing. And he's confirming it by saying he's bringing a government. 
Now we find him, he's arrived, and he's announcing it. In verse 7, chapter 7, chapter 4 rather, verse, what, verse 17, he says, the kingdom of heaven has arrived. So what Jesus brought to us was not a religion, but a kingdom. And I want you to write these principles down, I'm going to put up on the board, if you will. For those of you who are following this series, I've been helping you by giving you some tips on the, on the, uh, the, the bulletin. So here's the first one. The greatest gift that God sent to earth was a kingdom, not a religion. The number one problem in the world right now is religion. Religion is the, is the source of all of our trauma right now. And all the trouble that we are facing in the future will be religion motivated. As a matter of fact, they're trying to divide the world in two halves right now, Islam and Christianity. That's why you better get out of both and get into the kingdom. Jesus did not bring a religion. He brought a kingdom. Second principle, the greatest message delivered by Jesus was the kingdom message. It was not a message of rituals and traditions and, and all these techniques and things we go through that we call religion. He really brought a kingdom message. If you read the four gospels, there's only one message Jesus preached. He preached the kingdom of God. I found it interesting, you know, Christ never preached the stuff we're preaching today. He never preached prosperity. He never preached healing. He never preached, you know, uh, all the stuff, you know, pursuing material things. Matter of fact, he wasn't against them, but he didn't preach them. He talked about money a lot. He talked about prosperity a lot. He talked about healing and health a lot. He talked about power and dominion a lot. But he never talked about it as a message. He talked about it as a benefit. Boy, that's a good word. In other words, if you get into the kingdom, all this stuff is there. He said, don't go and seek all this stuff you're preaching about. Get in the kingdom and this stuff will seek you. And so I think even our message got to be checked as we look at what he preached. He preached the kingdom of God. You see, uh, if, you, if you are an, an illegal immigrant, by the way, let me back up here to put the perspective here. A kingdom is not a religion. In a religion, you can become a member. You can't become a member of a kingdom. You must become a citizen. A kingdom is a country, a government, and an authority that has a national influence. So a kingdom is a government, and you can only become a citizen of a government, not a member of a government. Now, a citizen means you have legal rights. If you are an illegal citizen in your country, illegal, that means in, in a, a country, if you are an illegal citizen, you realize that if you were to go to the hospital and they treat you, you are benefiting illegally. You get my point? Did you know that? If you are not a, a, a legal citizen, and you go to the hospital, and they give you free medical service, whatever your emergency is, you are getting service illegally. But you're benefiting. Now, why am I saying this? You see, Christ never wanted you to become a member, because as a member, you benefit illegally. But if you become a citizen, you have a right to be treated. They owe it to you. It's your right as a citizen to be treated by the hospital if you are a citizen of, the, of, of your country. Because it's the government's responsibility to take care of you. The point is, uh, when the disciples started saying things like, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? Where shall we live? How shall we live? He says, stop worrying about those things. Why? He says, because if you seek first the kingdom... In other words, get into citizenship, then all these things shall what? Be added unto you. So if you want to be secure in life now, and by the way, this is deep, you know. Sometimes I think, how did we become so messed up religiously? Because we've been taught, and I know you don't think about it, but we've been taught that how we shall live, how we shall eat, how we shall dress, all this stuff. We believe that this is going to be in the afterlife. In other words, you'll get the big house and the car and the big clo nice clothes and, and all the food in heaven. No, the disciples was hungry now. I'm getting at something. They were hungry then. They said, how shall we eat? What shall we wear? How, where shall we live? We, 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 we want our needs met now. Christ says, no problem. Seek first the kingdom of God when? Now, and all these things shall be added to you when? Now, not in the sweet by and by. Which means that the kingdom of God can work right in the middle of economic crisis now. You better get this. 
In other words, no matter what happens, if you are a citizen of the kingdom of God, you are secure. God will take care of you. He says, the Father knows you have need. Say, neighbor, God knows every single bill you owe. Say it loud. God knows every bill you owe right now. And God's going to pay it. And even if you lose your job, God's going to pay that bill. Come on, talk to me. The job ain't your source. The kingdom of God is your source because you are a citizen. That's why you can have what? Peace. So when they give you a pink slip, just smile and say, thank you very much. You just activated my government. That's a good moment to shout. You missed it. In other words, when this kingdom pulls the rug up from under you, God puts a house under your foot. He secures you because the kingdom of God is active now. Everybody say right now. Say it again. Now. That's what the Holy Spirit has been saying to me all week. He says, tell the people this thing works now. It works now. That's why I can wake up every morning without any fear, without any depression, without any worry, because the kingdom of God works now. Third principle. The greatest need of mankind is a kingdom. Why? That's what God sent us. Fourth principle. The most stable kingdom on earth is the kingdom of God. We read it just now. Don't worry about this kingdom having any problems. No one can terrorize this kingdom. As a matter of fact, David was being terrorized. When you read the Psalms of David, some of them are dealing with him in the midst of terror by his enemies. They were attacking and they were launching attacks on him. And David wrote a psalm after God told him not to worry. David says, I will not fear the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that come at noonday, nor the terror that comes by night or day. I will not be afraid, he says. For the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. He says, the Lord's name is like a high tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. In other words, David says, look, no matter what kind of activity is going on around you in the world, he says, in the kingdom of God, you've got an advantage. You've got protection that is beyond your government on earth. I listened to President Bush speaking last night. Uh, They were sharing his radio address this past week uh, that he spoke two days ago. And they were playing it. I listened to it. And I listened to see if he had any confidence and any comfort for me if I was a citizen. And when I listened to his speech and he ended it, I realized there was no comfort. He said, we don't know where the source of the anthrax is. We don't know where it's tied to the September 11 event. We don't know who is perpetrating this. We don't know. Where these letters are coming from. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. I said, but somebody got to know something if I'm going to sleep well. If the most powerful leader in the world don't know, you better hook on to somebody who knows. Come on, somebody. I mean, I sat there last night and I shook. I said, this man... Is telling his entire nation of almost 300 million people, I cannot protect you. I know some of you Bahamians think that far away. But our letters come through and from. The United States. And you know, we ain't got no antibiotics. Don't look at me funny now. You all better get into the kingdom. One letter in the post office down there and we got problems. I mean, our ministry of tourism already burned up. We only need one letter in the ministry of works. Get in the kingdom. If Mr. Bush can't help the United States citizens, you think Mr. Ingram could help you? We get our medication from them. And they can take care of themselves first. Get in the kingdom. You need protection that is beyond anthrax. You need that protection. Let me give you what the Lord told me today. 
last night rather he says look he says you you be reminded my son that i told you this is my government promises the policy of the kingdom of god goes like this you shall drink eat or sniff any harmful thing and it shall not hurt you you better praise him one time right now you better claim that now because you don't know what you're sniffing Oh, come on, praise him, shout Shabbat for a second. You got to understand that policy. See, that policy got to be real now, because we ain't got no antibiotics. This is no time to be religious. Anthrax will kill you, but if you're in the kingdom, you can walk right through the smoke. Come out, don't even smell like smoke. Ask Daniel, the guy who went through the fire, and, through the, and, and, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they went through the fire, and Daniel went through the lion's den. Couldn't touch it. Stay neighbor, can't touch this. Now say it like you believe it. Can't touch this. Come on, save it some feeling. Can't touch this. The kingdom of God is all we got. It cannot be moved. This next statement, the kingdom is the practical spiritual influence of God in our daily contemporary life. I want you to write this statement down. This is very important. The kingdom of God is the practical spiritual influence of God in our daily contemporary life. It is living under the laws on another government's territory. Now, let me just tell you how important this statement is. I want you to listen now because you, you're going to need this for the next 20 years. The world has changed. But according to the word of God, he's the same yesterday, today. Everybody's saying the world has changed. Not the government of God. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can I hear an amen? The same government policy that Daniel used to sleep on a lion's stomach is the same policy that's still available to you. The government hasn't changed. The same policy... That kept Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego through a furnace and come out, and the Bible said they didn't, they didn't even smell like smoke. I mean, some of us, we just go near fire, we smell smoky. These guys went in the thing and didn't come out smelling like smoke. Could you imagine that policy is still available today? Yeah. Some of you are going through some challenges. I don't know. Maybe you are t on medication. Maybe you're taking chemotherapy. Maybe you are being treated for some kind of disease. I don't know. Maybe today is a different day in your life. God sent me to tell you. You need to kick in on the kingdom and say, look, no matter what they do to me, other things are going to kick in today. My healing is coming from another source. You got to believe the kingdom of God today. And it works in our contemporary life. This is not an old time religion. This is a current religion, if you will call it religion. This thing is real. It works now. God is not going to bless you. He has already blessed you. But all you need in spiritual, in, in spiritual places, you just need to claim that and pull it out of the heavens. The kingdom of God works when? Now. When does it work? Now. We live under the laws of another government. Now, here's what I want you to understand. Watch this. When I went to visit our embassy this past week, in New York. Uh, as soon as I arrived at the door, the staff members greeted me because I am considered a member of the diplomatic corps in my country. They gave me their courtesies. Then they took me to see the ambassador. We sat down and we talked. And we were chatting. I was thinking as we talked. I said, where am I? He says, why are you ask the question? I said, where am I right now? He said, I mean, you in my office. I said, where am I right now? He said, oh, and then he smiled. He said, oh, you are in the Bahamas. I said, wait a minute, I'm in New York. He says, I know that. He said, but the minute you walked on this property, you entered the Bahamas. A government, a kingdom, gives you the ability to live under the laws of another government in another country. He said, 
The embassy is not property of the country it's in. It's property of the country it's from. Now you all hear me? <laughs> when Christ says, seek first to get into the kingdom of God, he was saying, seek to get on the property. <laughs> That's why an ambassador is a dangerous creature. <laughs> An ambassador embodies a country, and when he enters an embassy, he enters the country. And if, if, if somebody's in trouble with the law, and they run into our embassy, our government protects them. Did you know that? That's why embassies normally have secure doors. Because if a criminal gets into an embassy, he, he enters another country. Anybody with me? So no matter what I'm doing outside, once I get inside the door, that government law kicks in. Now that government law says that in order for me to leave that building, I have to be extradited from the building. Why? I'm in another country. So they got to contact my government to discuss getting me out of the building. You all understand how deep this is. That's why Jesus never says that you are a senator or a uh, congressman, the Bible calls you a an ambassador. Well, you better be glad. See, you, you don't vote an ambassador in. He's appointed by the the, the 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 president or the king. So you are an ambassador, which means that when you when you are in your position, you are under the laws of the country you are from, not the laws of the country you are in. I'm going to say it again. When you are in an embassy, you are under the laws of the country you are from, not the country you are in. Let me quote it the way Jesus quoted. He says, you people who are in my kingdom, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. So the world says, economy is dropping, stock market falling apart, jobs being taken away, business shutting down, trouble ahead. Economic times going to be tough. Get ready. Tighten your belt. Going to be poor. Going to be rough. We're going under. That's that world. But right in the midst of that in my country. Tell you never get in the kingdom. Now. This is no time to be religious. Let me tell you what. He never says, seek ye first the Baptist, the Methodist, the Anglican, Episcopalian, Pentecostal, Charismatic, or Church of God. Or seven day. He said, you better seek the kingdom of God. My safety and my security, my confidence. I have no fear about the future. None. This thing real for me, man. I ain't faking this. The kingdom of God is real to me. I hope it's real to you. Otherwise, you ain't going to make it. That's what David meant when David says a thousand will fall at my right side and ten thousand may fall at my left, but it shall not come near me. How can a man speak that way? He said, folks are dying on my left, folks are dying on my right. He said, but it can't get to me. Why? Because the Lord's name is a strong tower. The chance and just thank him for his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, the Lord's name is what? A strong tower. You know, when I took my passport out yesterday, I saw my passport. It says, property of the Bahamas government. That means when you become a citizen, you become the property of the government. Hallelujah. I'm not a member of a country. I belong to it. They are responsible for me. When you're in trouble... You ain't got to call the angels, you know. It says the government gave the angels charge. <laughs> the government said, look, I don't care what they do. You take care of my citizens. This kingdom of God is practical. It's safe to be in the kingdom of God. No wonder why when that man, Jesus said the man was digging in the field and, and, and he found something. He was working, you know, he's just a laborer working. And he found this thing. And he looked right and left, the Bible says, and then he covered it back up. And then he went and sold his dog, cat, house, land, boat, everything. 
And he took all the money, bought it back, and told the man, I want to buy that piece of property. One piece of property right there, I want to buy that. Sold everything just to buy one piece of property. Christ says, so is the kingdom of God. When a man discovers the kingdom of God, he sells everything else to get into that. Why? Because everything else is in that. <laughs> That's your protection. He says, the safest place to be is in my kingdom. And so today, I am here to challenge you and encourage you to remember that the future is secure. You can leave this building knowing that you are, you are a dual citizen. You are a Bahamian and a kingdom citizen. You only Bahamian because you're living in this territory here. But you are kingdom because you're connected up there. And you can be in the world, not of the world. Let me just give you... I can't even get to my session today, so you've got to come back tonight. I'm going to finish this tonight. But I want to just read some scripture for you here. Look at Matthew 7, verse 21. It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter fully experience the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter or fully experience the kingdom of heaven. But only those who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Not, any, not all those who say, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Now let me just stress here, he's not talking about getting into it. He's talking about exploring it, benefiting from it. Why? That's why they say, Lord, Lord, because they're already in it. <laughs> in other words, there are people who are going to be religious, but not experience the kingdom of God. Read it again. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, everybody won't call him Lord. He says, but not everyone who says that will experience the kingdom of God. In other words, they will not explore all the mysteries, all the opportunities, all the benefits, all the privileges that are in the kingdom of God. Even though they are religious people coming to church every week, they won't even experience the joy of what's available. What a tragedy. It's like my... My story, I always tell this story about potential. Story of this old man and old woman who never had anything. They were born in, in Bain Town like me. Never been nowhere, never saw anything all their lives. And one day, they won a, a trip to go on a cruise ship. They were so excited. My goodness. They got a free trip on a cruise ship for five days. To fly, I mean, to, to cruise down from Florida to Cancun, Mexico, over to Jamaica, and come back through the Bahamas, and then go up to Key West, and go back to Miami. I mean, they were so excited. Old people, never been nowhere, never had anything, never believed they deserve anything. They got themselves a free trip. The day came, they packed their little bags, a couple of clothes in it. On the way to the dock, they stopped by a penny shop, and they bought about seven packages of Soda biscuits. And they bought a slab of daisy cheese. Greasy daisy cheese. The kind we love. The ones that sweat. <laughs> and they got themselves these boxes of soda biscuits and uh, crackers and, and got this daisy cheese. They packed it. They were smiling. And they bought a few bottles of strawberry soda. <laughs> you all know sodas. You forgot about them, huh? In the bottle. They, they bought about five bottles. One bottle a day. They're going to share a bottle every day. After all, they ain't got much. These are poor people. And they figure, we're so excited to be on the cruise. We just thank God for the cruise. Praise the Lord for the cruise. We're going to take our food with us. They went on board that cruise with their basket full of these crackers and daisy cheese and strawberry sodas. They were greeted by the hostess and everybody was... You know, happy, and they showed them to their cabin. I mean, exclusive cabin, nice cabin. Looking out through the little porthole, they could see the ocean. Oh, this was heaven for them. They were so excited. And then afterwards, the ship took off. My goodness, they just held each other in the room and just said, Oh, praise the Lord. Everybody else was on top of the deck, looking at the beauty of departing the harbor. They were so excited. They stayed in the room. They just glad to be on board. Matter of fact, they were convinced that they were not allowed outside the room because you had to pay money to go out the room and go upstairs. They were not aware. And so they stayed in the room. And for four days, they stayed in that room. 
looking out the window, just happy, and they were excited. We were going on a cruise, praise the Lord, and they, every morning, they ate one cracker and a slice of cheese. Lunchtime, they ate two crackers and two slices of cheese. Dinner time, they ate three crackers. They were excited, and they shared that great soda, praise the Lord. They were so excited. After all, we made it on the ship. We ain't never had the chance to be on no ship. It's a joy to be on the ship. Glory, hallelujah. It's a blessing na, 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 to be on a ship. Five days passed. It was time for the captain's ball. Everybody put on their fine clothes, man. Bow ties and long dresses, evening gowns. I mean, the food was piled up like mountains around the place. And everybody was... Announcement came over. Everybody must make their way down to the dining room. The captain is going to meet with everybody. And they're going to have a big celebration tonight. It's captain's night. And they said to themselves, well, that's not for us. It's for the rich people. So we'll just thank God that we made it on the ship anyhow. At least we're on the ship. Praise the Lord. And they cut their little cheese, cheese. And, and they toasted their little soda biscuit and drank their soda, strawberry soda. And it just so happens that when the captain came out, he was talking to the people and cheering them up and thanking them for coming on the, tr- on the cruise. And, and, and then uh, there was a complaint that was brought to the captain. The captain said, I have a complaint. Uh, I'm concerned there are two people missing in our ship. We know they bought it, but we haven't seen them all week. And I'm concerned because uh, my responsibility is to know where everybody is. I'd like to know that there's a table over there. That's always had two empty chairs. We don't know where those people are. We tried to find out what's going on. And tonight, we want to know, does anyone know where these two people are? And he called their names. And nobody knew. So he told one of the assistants, can you go please and check the register? They checked the register. They found the name. They found the cabin. And they went to the cabin, knocked on the door. And these two folks sitting on the bed eating crackers and cheese and drinking strawberry soda. And happy as a lark. It's amazing when you're foolish, you can be happy. <laughs> just happy what? To be on board. Some folks just happy to be saved. And so the system came in, knocked on the door, opened the door, and the sister says, Good evening. And they said, Hi, praise the Lord. And he said, uh, What are you doing here? And they said, Oh, we're just having dinner. And there's the biscuits all over the bed, and the cheese all over the bed. And they, they said, we, we're just having a little, little dinner, snack, you know, we just, we just thank, thank you so much for letting us come on the ship, and we're so happy to be with you all, and this is great, and, you know, and my goodness. So the guy says, what are you doing here? He said, well, we, we, uh, we, we just having dinner. He said, but how long were you in the room? He, <laughs> all week. <laughs> he said, all week, yes. What were you doing? Oh, we've just been enjoying the cruise, sir. Just enjoying the ride. We've just been having such a good time. It's great, isn't it? Look at the water. See, the water's moving by. And they're so excited. He said, you've been here all week. What did you eat? Oh, no, we've we, we doing fine. See, even when folks are poor, they think they're doing fine. You can be so satisfied with nothing, you think nothing is something. He said, you mean to tell me you ate all week? Cheese and crackers and strawberry soda. They said, yes, that's all we could afford. You know, we don't, we don't have much. You know, we're just happy to be here. Praise the Lord. And he said, let me see your ticket. So she dug down this dirty bag, found the tickets all mashed up, gave it to him. He said, are these your tickets? They said, yes, we, we won them. Oh, he said, did you read the fine print? No, uh, they just took the stubs and just told us to go on board. He said, but did you read? Did you read the fine print? No, sir. Uh, they just stamped this and they gave it to us and told us to go on board. He said, no, but did you read? See, they ain't going to read the fine print for you. You got to read it for yourself. Did you read the fine print? Because in this ticket, uh, every privilege and every benefit that's belonging to you, this ticket has benefits and privileges. They said, No. He said, let me read to you your benefit. And he read the sentences written there on that stub. And it says, the holder of this ticket has access to every available amenity on board the ship. Food, swimming, drinks, everything, games, everything. 
They looked at each other. And they looked at him. And they said, you mean we could actually go out of the room and go upstairs? He said, you never been upstairs? They said, you mean we could have actually gone down to the banquet and eat every day and every night? He says, all day. All the food was yours. You mean we could have swum in the pool? We've been looking at people, but we, we, we thought it was only for rich people. He said, the pool is yours. You mean we could have gone to the game room and play those games? All that was yours. Can we go? He says, we're docking in 15 minutes. Some folks just want to go to heaven. Not everyone that called me, Lord, Lord, will explore, enjoy, benefit, experience the kingdom of God. There are many people just like that. They won't read the fine print. My job is to help you read the fine print. That's why they call me a lawyer. (laughs) You got in your hand a legal document. It's called the Bible. And my job as a law giver is to help you understand your privileges and your rights. Christ says the job is just to get on board. If you get on board, everything's on board. Isn't that great? When you take a cruise, you ain't got to go shopping for food, eh? Just got to get on board. Once you get on board, everything is on board. If you seek first the kingdom of God, all these things are on board. But even though you're on board, now you got to what? You got to learn them keys to have access to all that's yours. And that's why the kingdom of God has not been explored. My passion, my desire, my hope is that everyone here would leave here knowing their rights in the kingdom of God. Tell your neighbor, go upstairs and go to the banquet room. Stop eating cheese and crackers. How many of you are cheese and crackers believers? Let me see your hands. Cheese and crackers people, let me see your hands. How many of you are banker people? Let me see your hands. All the banker people, hold your hand up. Come on, lift them higher. Say, Lord, you gave me Christ. And if you gave me Christ, you will with him also give me everything else. Give him a praise for a second. That's right. He gives me everything else. I'm going to stop on this last verse and we're going to pick up here next time. It says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house upon a rock. The whole key is getting to know his words. That's the key to success. We're going to learn more about that in the next segment because time is gone. But I hope that you've enjoyed this morning knowing that you can walk out of here with a big smile on your face. Knowing that there's nothing in the world that can touch you if you are in the kingdom of God. If you are not in the kingdom of God today, I beg you. You can't take a chance. The Taliban and Osama, they're going to affect you. But if you're in the kingdom of God, we got another name named Jesus Christ. They can't affect him. And if you are covered by him, your life is wrapped up in his safety. You cannot be moved. Can I hear an amen? amen. God bless you. Praise him for a praise offering. Amen. Oh, come on. Crap like you're really... We hope you enjoyed this presentation from the Rediscovering the Kingdom series. 